NFR. NFR Extra is a podcast dedicated to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and features icons and personalities that embody the Western lifestyle. But I can't, like, if I practiced every day, I'd have to have hip surgery, Your back hips. surgery, and elbow surgery, like, literally. Like, I tried to practice, and I went to Tandy, and literally have to have bone spurs, herniated disc in my back. Jeez, that's, that Caleb Schmidt's getting old. Are you sure you weren't a bareback rider? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It would kill me. Would literally <laughs> a die. rookie in the bareback riding. Yeah. By the time my brother come around, I made him wait till he was 16, and then my youngest brother, I made him wait till he was 17 to get on. This, I think it's going to prolong their careers a heck of a lot longer than what mine's going to end up being. Why tear yourself up when you can't win money? Yeah. You know, go to the high school rodeo and your entry fees are 100 bucks and you win $30 a day, you know? like you got 10 points, though. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, going to get that Todd Sloan tra- saddle. To- <laughs> win a free horse bucket from the feed store. Yeah. <laughs> This is Brylan Bentley, and you're listening to NFR Extra. Have you really won the average every year? Yep. Three times, right? Yes, sir. In a row. Yep, 20, 21, and 22. Every, every time would be in a row. That's, let's, let's well, look did he make that? Consecutive. Make the, yeah, but did he make the finals every year? Yeah, those are only row. three years I've made yeah, the finals. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. He bust onto the scene in Arlington yep. with a big average win. And Casey Field got a re-ride when he has 87 points. He rides good. Average at best. I've seen him do it well once or twice. Yeah. How's your family and your wife, Wag? Oh, they're both good. They're both good. Preparing you for your interview here in a minute. <laughs> well, that's not fair. You got all the notes. <laughs> Wag, so how did you get started bulldogging? Like, where did you get your start in rodeo? Uh, man, my dad used to circuit rodeos. All he did whenever I was little. He was a little bitty guy, and I was a little dirty kid playing in the practice pen. He used to get uh, little longhorn calves, tape PVC pipe across the back of their heads so that I had enough horn to bulldog. <laughs> and graduated high school and amateur rodeo a couple years and shot horses, and chewing horses wasn't for me. And we started winning, so here we are now. Now I get to do a podcast with you, Jess. Nice. Nice. Then over shoeing horses will make you bulldog good. Dude, it's, it's It'll like make you do game. anything good. It's not fun making money that way. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, dude, I'm I'm certified in the forge, uh, all those kind of deals. I got all the certifications and everything. I do not get underneath one. Yeah, that's I, I took that too. Not doing that. So did you go to Did you go to college? Did you college already? No, no, school of life. School of life. That's it. That's it. Hard knocks. Hard yeah. knocks. Yeah. Now me me and school wasn't going to work out that well. Did you graduate college? Me? I did. Where at? Missouri Valley College, Bearback University. I was about to say Bearback, Bearback University. University. Yeah. <laughs> I was at Rodeo University. As long as you were good at Rodeo, you did not fail. There's no way. Yeah. So, I majored pass. in Bronx beers and babes. But, uh, the boy that lives down there at the house, he has all of his stuff online. He doesn't know who any of his professors is, and he is making straight A's in college. Yeah, Cash, he, he has no <laughs> idea what's going on in school, but he's making great grades. <laughs> it's crazy how that works, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. you're the valedictorian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got grades I didn't even know I was enrolled in classes. Did you go to college, Zeke? I did, yeah. Same thing. In Canada? Well, well, they have online. college in Canada? No, I actually went to Sheridan. Wyoming. Sheridan, Wyoming. Who was the coach the there? Indians. Uh, oh, Mark Gilkerson. So yeah. Interesting. It was pretty good school, like as far as like rock riding, you know. Good region, good horses. Sankey's takes a bunch of practice A lot of Sankey's, there, right? a lot of John Forbes, J.D. Hammaker. Tell me about your purple but- shirts. LSU. Uh, you LSU? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with LSU. You uh, and Whenever I was No. Whenever I was younger, uh, I lived with Oat Berry, and Oat said that purple was the most unlucky color in rodeo. So every major rodeo that I go to, every 10th round, the American, Houston short round, any short round, I got to wear a purple shirt just to piss them off. Why do all the bron- uh, Bulldoggers wear solid colors? Is that a thing? Does everybody no. do that? I, I, I literally got a plaid on it right now. Yeah, but y'all all do it. Rowdy does it too. Pearson. Only wear solid colors. You mean like pick one color shirt? No. Or just solid? Just solid. No, uh, Will, Dakota, and Hass are the only ones that do that. So mine are all black. Every one of them. Yeah, I go so black or denim. mistaken for a bulldogger. They're talking about how much yes. better we are at this than them. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's laughing, but he's writing notes down over there. <laughs> yeah. 
I feel like sponsors look a lot better on a solid shirt rather than a plaid. Make some pop. Mm-hmm. Some pop. Oh, yeah. Do you like to get the two tones going, Caleb? Yeah. Yeah. It's different. Oh, you're on solid. Except for why. We did get the same shirt on. <laughs> did either you guys try rough stock of that? Never did? No, but Weston I feel like you tried to ride bareback. Weston, y'all remember that? that? You know Weston Hughes? Yeah, I didn't know I he tried to be a bareback. Broke, broke his back. I was say that. Back. Broke his back. That's why he didn't rodeo for like two years. Yeah. No lie. He was so mad at himself that he got on bareback course. <laughs> and it damn near killed him. What about Buddy Rick, the driver in Red Bluff? Um, Who's drives driving? for them team ropers. Uh, redheaded guy. You don't, you don't know who I'm talking about? I can't think of his name. Redheaded guy. He, dr- he drives like he drove for like Colton Schmidt and some of them guys. No, but I wish I had the video of Weston. It, is, it killed him. He died that day. Come smooth out the back after it snapped his neck about four times. Bad. <laughs> I just want to know why all of his friends let him get on. <laughs> Yeah, he had shit going for you in one event. And he's just trying well, that. that's what happened to that other kid. He had come down, hadn't been on a bareback horse in four years, had been a driver, got on come down at Red Bluff, and same thing. But wasn't it uh, uh, here's uh, the deal got on a couple Uthier. years ago at Red Bluff? And cut a, no, it's it's Cheyenne. Cheyenne. He was in bareback no, last year at Cheyenne. Yeah, Uthier, or Uthier just mane and tailed one in Cheyenne. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they let it out. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty mad about that, too. <laughs> Tom Newens got on at Frontiers practice pen a year or two ago. Still can't mark one out. <laughs> I can't lift his shoulder above his <laughs> ear either. Well, then uh, Rumford got on the Saddle Bronc Horse of the Year at Corpus Christi. Yeah, that yeah. killed him too. I've so seen that get on a few. Say Rump's done every event in rodeo. Big Bear. When your last name's Rumford, you have to. Yeah. It's just it's standard protocol. Yeah. Yeah, I've never dogged. A, I've never jumped a steer or got on a bareback horse. That's actually how I tore my ACL in eighth grade, shoot dogging. No kidding. Yep. Thought I was gonna be a bulldogger. That the other way worked out way better. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad <laughs> I kept I'm glad I stayed with the rough stock. Yeah. But so when you were like little, you watched bareback and thought that looked fun? I wanted to be a bull rider forever. Like that was thought I was gonna go to the PBR and do all that and then um wanted to be Ty Murray like when I got in high school, so got on all three rough stock events and by the time I got to college bareback was my best event and I knew that's what I wanted to do. Just kinda took it and ran with it and quit the others. That's a lie. Tilden Hooper told me that bareback riders are the guys that weren't good at any of the other events. <laughs> <laughs> so they ride bareback horses. That's what they say about the bulldoggers are the ones that can't catch them with the ropes, <laughs> so they gotta use their damn hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's all life's about perspective, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Strengths and weaknesses. Because that's where I can watch y'all guys that are really good at it, and it still looks zero fun. Oh, yeah. Good rides look like it hurts. Yeah. Remember when you get off and you're like, ah, yeah. Whack you in the back of the head three or four times, and you don't know where you're at, but, man, that was fun. Whenever you got four rolls of tape holding your shoulder and arm <laughs> together, I don't know how fun. Yeah, hey, you have to have a brace on your arm, one on your neck, a butt pad. <laughs> no, you don't have to have the butt pad. You gotta I mean, wait probably want it. Come by and the second well, wreck's coming. I, I kind of like contact, you know. <laughs> You're full contact. You're full I, like, contact. I like to. I get. I like to get up close and personal with it. <laughs> There's no way you're not full contact in bareback. You're fully committed. Oh, yeah. How how sore are you after the tenth round of the finals? After getting on one every day for ten days straight? It's really not bad. Like you're super sore up until the third round, just because you really haven't been getting on anything. You just ride the spur board and bucket machine coming into it. Yeah. And uh, so by the time you get on your eliminator, you just feel like crap, and then they yank it right back out of you, and it just kind of becomes normal again. <clears throat> Sounds fun. Like, I don't want to go to my arena and practice roping calves because it's so t- miserably, and I'm so <laughs> sore. I can't imagine having to go get on a uh, bareback court. So, it, like, say the the – 10 rounds at the NFR or whenever you're going all over the place during the 4th of July, which one would be harder on you, your body, your tire, and all that kind of stuff? Would it be harder for the 4th of July stuff or the NFR? They're probably similar in equivalents, I would think. It just depends, like, what, yeah, like, if you get in a sidewinder of a wreck, and you'll be sore for a while, but. Yeah. I mean, like, your body just adapts to it, I think, you know. All your muscles and stuff, you have your bareback muscles, and they just, are, they're used to it. I'm not going to lie, During I got sick during the NFR this year, so after round six, I started sleeping with onions in my socks, trying to pull the toxins and stuff out. <laughs> I am not going to lie, it did make me feel a lot better, like in soreness-wise. So. It just smelled terrible. Though. You used grandma's old trick, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that old, old Indian trick. 
Yeah. I thought it worked. I mean, I remember warming up for round seven, and I thought, God, you guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go get my knee taped at Prescott before the rodeo. and Watching these guys get ready wore me out. It's like there is way too much preparation to get on a bareback horse. Oh, yeah. Like I was there for 30 minutes. I felt like I was there forever. They were there for two hours. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, we go check the draw an hour and a half ahead of time. They're stretching already. Like, golly, we're going to the parking lot and drink miserable. beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds miserable. They don't have to be there two hours. They just like to get there and use the first hour to sit around with their shirt off. <laughs> talk to each other. <laughs> they do, other. don't they, Jack? <laughs> it's natural to be half naked <laughs> sitting around talking to a bunch of guys. <laughs> so uh, how, uh, just for me, I'm always on the timed event. How important is it for y'all for which pickup man, because I know y'all vote on it and all that kind of stuff. So just out of curiosity, could we have a pickup man that goes to a whole bunch of rodeos, go into the Thomas and Mac, and it just be terrible for y'all? Or is that is that as big of a deal as I think it is, is what I'm saying? Yeah. Pickup men are pretty important, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. They're taking care of you and the, and the bucking horses, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, they're a pretty crucial part, I think. And you have guys that work really good as teams, yeah. and they have, like, their own style of picking up. But if you get two guys that have – two different ways of picking up you know it really doesn't look all that great they're still really good at what they do yeah, but but it don't have a very good chemistry out there yeah well they just they do things different so it's really hard to make that combination look good i think that there are bad pickup men out there though too but they don't get voted in i understand i'd be a good pickup man you would i'd get in there and save their lives yeah you would be a good pickup man i think i would all right Smith, if you could do or if you had to do another event in rodeo no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw that out because you're just going to pick Team Roping. If you had to do a rough stock event, which one? Saddle Bro. Yeah. It looks fun. I'm the same way. And it's the same way. Bareback would be. I'd ride bulls. I would too. do bareback. It, it would kill me. The first time it snapped my neck, my head would fly off. <laughs> <laughs> like, it you'd really have to put the bad. strap on my head and, like, come down here and tie it to my shoulders because <laughs> I just feel like it'd fly off. Because I've fallen off a horse a lot. I had a horse follow me the other day, and I thought it killed me. And it was so slow and graceful. And I just, <laughs> just couldn't hit the ground and mud, and it was so soft. And I was like, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Done been had. Yeah, like what if you what if Bad, you stupid get on Virgil? That thing weighs 1,400 pounds and jumps four feet in the air. Kill they me. say he rides really That's good, it. though. It looks like it. You haven't got on him? I haven't got to get on him. But. Is he retired? No, no they bucket. just won Red Bluff on him. Yeah, no, they just don't put him next to my name. <laughs> Ticks me off. Yeah, I mean, I watched a little Will Low die in Denver. Yeah, on him, he killed him. No, did y'all see Will Low die at Angelo a couple years ago? <laughs> Killer B. It was like the same one. He did a full flip and then got kicked in the face and another <laughs> flip and off the camera. Like it was, and it didn't even knock him out. Oh yeah, he I'll got, have another cigarette. He got up and walked out of there. <laughs> yeah, he, I think he's the only one that you can't kill. That's a tough guy. He is the last of like that breed of bareback riders or rodeo cowboys yeah, I'm one in of general. The older bulldoggers, and I can still remember sitting down in my whitey tighties watching the NFR with like a little bowl of candy as a kid watching the NFR, and Will Lowe's winning world titles. Yeah, and now I'm one of the older bulldoggers, and he's still going. <laughs> so, yeah, he started rodeoing before I was in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> well, he won the world when he was 18, didn't he? Yeah. He's Kansas he's been guy at too. It. Been at it for a while. Yeah. So what, 0, 02, was that the first year he won a world title? I think. It's either 02 or 03, maybe. I don't know, that's an Andy question. I hope nobody says that about me. Doug Smith's still rodeoing. <laughs> I remember watching him when I was in kindergarten. Now I'm at the NFR with him. Surely Riley Webb wasn't that's, doing that. That's, that's in what kindergarten. Our, dude, that, that was, was your first year's 13. 11 years 18. ago now. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Golly. Freaking kids, they start too early, though. That's true. They don't have nothing better to do. How many calves a week would you run? Me? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Like when you're home practicing. Answer it honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Six. Let me give you the honest <laughs> answer here. That's you shot way too That's high. way too many. <laughs> so, roping.com came to my house in February. Maybe beginning of March, and I bet I ran five calves for him. And then Durango came about a month ago, and I probably ran seven calves for him. That's it. Since January 1st. Since uh, November, beginning of November. Did you go we to get school? a lot of rain, though. 
you know, it's just hard to find a time. Before to the practice. NFR, do you practice on pockets or you just break away mm-hmm. on it? I went to Moss's and ran one calf on it. It felt pretty good. Practice I got the video. Like it. Felt good. Oh, yeah. Felt good. Not everybody does that. Yeah. Not everybody does that. <laughs> you got to visualize. I tell you got to visualize. So awesome. <laughs> I tell myself I don't want to mess myself up. So, yeah. you know, the Lord only gives you so many good runs. Why waste them in a practice pen? 15 practice. Yeah, 15. Yep. 15 practice runs in six months. But I used to run about, I have a yellow horse that I used to run 20 or 30 a day on. I used to get it pretty good. Now that's why I can't do it. But do you for the tie last from the post quite years, a bit? No, that's the stupidest thing ever to me. I think. How come? Do it off a horse. It's real life. Why practice the way you don't compete? For the last three years, I don't practice a whole lot. I found a lot of other things I like to do better. But how I many, how many steers do you dog a week? We run a bunch of steers. Do you you, practice yeah. you guys day. stay after it. If it's dry at the house, we're practicing. Yeah. We normally got fresh steers that come in every week, and I got a couple boys that stay there at the house with me all the time. So we got a lot of guys to practice with. Yeah. We, we, we try to get after it. But I can't practice. Like, if I practiced every day, I'd have to have hip surgery, Your back hips. surgery, and elbow surgery. Like, literally. Like, I tried to practice, and I went to Tandy, and he was like, you literally have to have bone spurs, herniated disc in my back. My elbow has so much cartilage. and shit Jeez, that and Caleb Schmidt's getting old. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't a bareback rider? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It would kill me. Would literally <laughs> a rookie die. in the bareback riding. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you have everything wrong with you that everyone else does? Yeah, but I just – it feels so much better not to practice because it just hurts so bad, and I just don't do it. Gosh, this sounds depressing. It is. <laughs> it's getting old. Hey, young kids want to be a calf rover. Uh, yeah, don't practice uh, like Caleb does. Just don't do it like I did it. Don't then. practice or your hip will be bone on bone. <laughs> Enter and win. Let's take a quick pause, and we'll be right back. Looking to rope in some news and features you can't find anywhere else? Then look no further than the series of blogs at nfrexperience.com. You'll find customized content from experts in all things rodeo and Las Vegas. There's the NFR Insider, the Mental Game and One-on-One with Susan Canode, Hurley's Hotspots and Gold Buckle Buzz with Brian Hurlbert, NFR Experience with Patrick Everson, and the Junior World Finals with Jack Nowlin. There's something for all rodeo fans. Check it out at nfrexperience.com because legacies and memories are made in Vegas. How many practice horses do you guys get on throughout the year? I got on two last year before the NFR. That was it. I like take the roughy, I take the roughy stuff, approach. Do what? You do like the, the dummy and all kinds of stuff, though, yeah. prior to the NFR? It's per board and bucket machine because you have to do everything right on it mm-hmm. without it moving, you know? Okay. So you're just all muscle memory. So when you get on onto a bucking horse, it's all muscle memory. And, like, you, I've already visualized every horse that I'm going to get on at the NFR before I ever show up there riding it on the spur board. It's all a mental game. It's all the mental game. Yeah. like it. Houston Hutter told me you've been practicing your whole life. You ain't got it figured out by now. You're not gonna. Yes. So why practice? Might mess yourself up. Oh yeah, how about him <laughs> cracking back out there the other day? Yes. Yeah, he's got a couple of them in seven. Oh yeah. He was blasting at the American, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, so he made yeah. the final, made the four round. Not the four round. He made the uh, or the other one eight round the, or whatever it was. Big, whatever, the, bigger, the American. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was seven seven, and they didn't even clap. So. Rep junior rodeo calves. Yeah. I was, <laughs> junior rodeo horse. <laughs> yeah. I where's mean, the, there was roughies. Where's the, where's the 250 weights we got to jerk yeah. out, huh? I, mean, I promise you, those roughies and team ropers that could have went seven on these calves. Like, it's so terrible. It's not a roping. <laughs> yeah, it's we watched second. it. It actually doesn't look very good. But I mean, if you've never been to a rodeo and sitting in the crowd, yeah, it's pretty good. But if you're a rodeo fan, you're like, why? These guys are professionals. Yeah, yeah. see, I'd rather watch the Houston with, you know, the big calves. And... Well, we've been here an hour. <laughs> Close to it, for sure. <laughs> Zeke, how'd you end up picking the bronc riding? Well, uh, my dad was a bronc rider. I was kind of like you on be Ty Murray, ride all the events. Uh, I thought I was going to be a bull rider for a pretty good while. Um, broke my femur, and then I started practicing my bronc. I just kind of got on broncs just to do it. Mm-hmm. And I started getting a little more serious about it. And I was laid up, and I come back. I was getting on broncs and bulls. 
LeBron Cran was just way easier on my body. <laughs> so I went that route. Does anybody that rides bucking horses start off at bucking horses? It seems like everybody always says that they were bull riders first. Or most of them, anyways. Well, it's so much easier to There's start out riding do. calves and steers and stuff, you know, through youth rodeo. Yeah. I think the pony riding is not the greatest on That's those young kids. That's the dumbest thing there is. Yeah. I just think you're starting all them young kids out and their bodies aren't mature. So, yeah, let's throw them on something that's going to run and kick and take yeah. six steps before it kicks again. And or You put them on the calves and steers that are a little more docile and can get a little timing in. Yeah. Like, I mean, I got on some ponies when I was a kid, but I was older, you know. And then once I got into high school as a freshman getting on, by the time my brother come around, I made him wait till he was 16. And then my youngest brother, I made him wait till he was 17 to get on. Just, I think it's going to prolong their careers a heck of a lot longer than what mine's going to end up being. Heck, beat out of them while they're early. Yeah. While they're young. Well, there's so much strain and stress on your elbow and everything when you're that young and it's not developed. What? Why tear yourself up when you can't win money? Yeah. You know, go to the high school rodeo and your entry fees are hundred bucks and you win thirty dollars a day. You know, yeah. like we got ten points though. <laughs> you know, you win, yeah, you get you, that Todd Sloan tra- saddle to <laughs> win a free horse bucket from the feed store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look, mommy, I got a ribbon. <laughs> Why are you dragging your arm? Don't worry about that. <laughs> Why's your neck broke? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that. Or putting their kids on them ponies and stuff that's trying to live through their kids, and it just drives me freaking nuts. Oh, yeah. We see that a lot in all the, like, schools and clinics and stuff that we put on. We put on one of them in Alabama the other day, and at least half the kids did not want to be there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was bad to watch. But then there's half of them there that are hungry and wanting to learn. And, I mean, they're, dang, they're in the way trying to figure stuff out. But half of them, you could tell mom and dad are dang sure shoving yeah. them in there. Mm-hmm. See, I actually really wanted to be a calf roper. But I took Caleb's approach and didn't practice. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't, didn't work. work for me. <laughs> I didn't take that approach forever. I just got, got smart, I guess, or dumb, one of the two. I, I did like roping calves. I actually really enjoyed it. should try to go compete with Josh Frosch and the, and the Linderman. Enter the calf roping and team roping in Red Bronx. I did a few years ago, actually. I entered some, but and it's hard. Like You go, go rodeoing down here. I'd enter a few Canadian rodeos, but be gone for three weeks not rope ride, ride my horse anything you know get back home everything's fresh and surely you've done the deal at gammon huh the what is it called no i never have been to gammon the legendary yeah, the classic or whatever, classic right? event yeah. yeah trip trip two, trip and, trip two yes, steers trip and ride bronx. two bronx mm-hmm. i got entered in that last year and uh, the next morning when i woke up i graciously pulled my name back out of the hat <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure getting on Heath's Colts and a rigging was that going to be that fun. Oh, they're going to let you use your bareback rigging. I wasn't going to give them the option. I damn sure <laughs> wasn't that dog saddle. Good. That's how we're doing it. Yeah. I rode a Salisbury 606 that <laughs> sat did. downhill on one, you know. <laughs> so. I feel like we've been here for quite some time and they have not called us to do something else. It's all right. So what do you guys do when you're not rodeoing? Like if your day, what is a day in the life of Tyler Waggis back at home? Man, we gonna pra- like I said, we practice every day that's dry and help those boys out that stay at the house and stuff. Right now, not too much. I mean, we ride around and check cows and hope they don't have no fence broke, but that's yeah. about it. It's uh now's a, now's my favorite. Right now in the spring is my favorite time to be at home. It's a time that we're not very busy. You can actually enjoy being around the family and stuff. Uh, because here in another month, whenever we load up, I mean, we very seldom get to fly back home and stuff because whenever we leave out, we got all of our stuff with us. It's kind of hard to go jump back to the house for a couple of days and stuff. So from about June to the end of September, we're kind of hooked up. Our fall and spring is my favorite times we get to hang out at the house. You guys get a bunch of feeder cattle and stuff like that, and don't you? And have mama cows and stuff. We've got I've got a couple mama cows. I mean, several mama cows, but uh, we normally we buy heifers weigh in probably three hundred and fifty to five hundred, and we put them on feeders till they get big enough to breed kick them out with bulls and normally sell them in the fall whenever they're heavy bred. I see. Do you do any AI in or anything or just straight no, bull breed? We just, we, uh, we, that town Creek farm that, uh, on my shirt, we get a lot of bulls from them and stuff. And we kind of try to over bull power all of our heifers that all of our heifers got a lot of brammer in them. So they don't exactly just take to the breeding right away. Mm-hmm. So we kind of over bull power them, try to keep them on them feeders, try to gel them down enough to where they will. Most of them will take before the fall. And then, uh, like I said, whenever we bring them in, we're hoping that they're going to be six to eight months bred whenever we get them sold. But a lot of times, a pretty big chunk of them are going to be four and five months bred, which you still do good on them. But 
Yeah. You dang sure want heavy. Yeah. <clears throat> Just getting a package put together of them at them lighter deals. Yeah. We uh we got different groups of them set out everywhere, and by the end of the fall, we'll kind of bring them all back and put them in little small groups, uniformed up and stuff, and, and sell them out that way. I see. Try to get 30 of them at a time into some of the specials down there. and Ideally, we want to sell them out of the pasture, but it's – too easy to go to one of them specials whenever the price is hot and mm-hmm. just let people, let a couple people like them and watch where it goes. Let the good times roll. <laughs> yeah. Schmidt, what do you got going on in your everyday life? Just cowboying. Uh, work a lot of cows. I run about 350, 400 cows. Commercial blacks or what are they? Shit, no. Ranching cows. Take a baby calf in a rain any day. Uh, take care of all that and work cows. Uh, right now we've been buying a bunch of in brand Mexican cattle, turning out in Fort Stockton and Uvalde. Got two ranches out there. We dump a bunch out there. Been buying all those right now. Finally got all them bought. And uh, if you're getting them in branded cattle, get someone some damn horns and let us have them. They ain't worth shit. <laughs> Pay eight hundred dollars for them and sell them for four hundred. That don't yeah. make sense. Yeah, they always say, "Yeah, look, we got this beautiful Mexican steer worth you know nine hundred. Something that's worth thirty five cents a pound at my house. <laughs> that's what everybody <laughs> thinks we're buying though. When you yeah. say Mexican cattle, they like." What are you gonna do with all them roping steers? I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> These are just crossbred calves with the M brand. Come from Mexico, Mexico hey, ranch. Crossbred ain't too much purebred down in there, is yeah, it? Yeah, no, they're perfect and they're tough. They come from down there. They sit on the border for 45 days in like a feed yard, and they well, they're straight quarantine you get them. them. Oh yeah, you can take them straight and just dump them out. They're already really? weaned. They've been on feed. They look like shit. They're thin. You don't buy a bunch of fat. It's awesome. It's the best way to go. <laughs> but if you can get them, but the Mexicans are getting smart. They know what they're worth. They yeah. know what they're worth over here, so they just sit on them until somebody offers them the right price. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to get them. But it's, uh, it's the only way to go. Better than buying them out of the barns here. Sick. and mm-hmm. You got to straighten them out. The natives, yes. Yeah. But the Mexicans, there, when they cross them, they dip them. And they they're look. ready to make money for you. Oh, yeah, you just dump them out on pasture. And they'll eat anything. They'll eat that curtain right there if they have to. <laughs> like a billy goat. Yep. Heck yeah. That's, what, that's exactly, exactly what they are. They're surviving on less where they came from. They will. Oh, yeah. I mean, literally, they'll eat anything. Like you, I know they used to buy them, and like a native will know not to eat Johnson grass because it'll kill them. It gets in their bloodstream and takes all the oxygen out. And a Mexican will just, you'll have, the whole herd will be dead if you put them on Johnson grass after a freeze or whatever because it's, I don't know. It's weird how it they'll works out. It. That's where we're at. They if, will you eat buy, it. if you get Mexicans in the springtime, we got so much clover down home, they'll bloat. Oh, they yeah. have no idea how to eat it. Yeah, they eat because their stomachs are so small because they take just a little bit in Mexico to eat. And down here, they, they eat so much that their stomachs won't expand. Just yeah, they got so much water in the grass down where we're at. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm around cattle and horses every day. Pretty busy. There's a lot of stuff to do. And then my father in law owns a feed yard. I'm surrounded by it. Always do something back there but mess with cattle i don't know to do anything else isn't that sad yeah <laughs> whenever we get done rodeo, you know, we're really leaning on this <laughs> i don't know about you guys i can't go get a normal job it's not gonna work mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you do uh pretty well the same thing as you yeah. they working and taking care of cows gotcha Everybody thinks I'm crazy at home. I've been getting some Hudgens Brahmin bulls to put on my Hereford cows and been the talk of the coffee shop for a while now. That damn kid, he's dumber than hell. <laughs> Send the heifers down south. You keep them steers up there, boy. <laughs> Dude called the other day. A, a pipeline company was digging a pipeline through somebody's pasture, and a bull fell. A Hudgens bull fell in it and died, and they didn't know. They charged him $50,000 for that bull. Golly. Impressive. During Houston, I went down and toured the Hutchins Ranch, and that place is freaking cool. Oh, yeah. Learning the history of Mansell and all that. Like, Who took you on the tour? It'd been Mark and Atlanta Joe Ferguson. Gotcha. You're down there in my country. Yes, yeah, so our we do it backwards to that, though. We got all our, we got commercial Bremer cows with Hereford bulls, but still getting the same thing. Mm-hmm. Stole some tiger stripe heifers the other day, two months bred. 3,300. Yep. That was in Navasota, wasn't it? Hallettsville. Oh. Yeah, that was about three weeks ago. I seen it uh, from across online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's high. That's stupid. That heifer deal's fixing to get real crazy. Oh, yeah. As long as we can keep getting rain throughout the Midwest. 
that dude had lost the pasture. He brought 200 head of cows in. His check was for 600,000. That's too impressive. They were high. Kind of put you a little scared about buying back at that time. No, you were going to want to wait. <laughs> Let it fall off in a couple yeah. years. You sell right that, now, don't buy. Isn't that the craziest thing? Whenever the price is high, everybody buys. When the price is low, nobody's buying cattle. I think it's because so many people are getting out. It's people pick up pastures and they want to fill them up. It's dumb. You won't find me buying nothing. Yeah. Shoot, everything we had that had a five-year-old mouth was going down the road here a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Still a good cow, but it's the same way to keep her. Don't make sense. Zeke, what's your day look like? Man, I'm glad I, I'm glad you asked because it looks a lot like your guys'. <laughs> we uh, we should we get get some yearlings in this time of year. Same thing, just get them straight, put them on grass. You do a ninety day deal on them, or no? We usually get them now. Like the we usually have them now, and we'll they'll go out like end of September, so 160, 180 days. And uh, yeah, like we get them in way in seven fifty. But. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we do. Right now, we've been putting on some ropings. I have some calf ropings. Trying to get Caleb to come. Where's it's it at? Stetler, Alberta. Oh, it's just I a skosh outside of your there. circle. <laughs> just a skosh outside of your circle. If you could draw it an oval, it's you'll make it. Invi- <laughs> it's the Caleb Schmidt Invitational. <laughs> Sorry I didn't make it, man. I feel bad. That's all good. <laughs> next year, pay your next year. Next year. You show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> no, nah, we uh, we just yeah stay pretty busy. There's lots going on all the time. How far do you live from Calgary's ranch? Uh, Stampede Ranch, about an hour and a half. Yeah, I go down there a fair bit. That's that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I want to go see it. They run cattle or anything, or just straight buck and stock, buck and horses. That's it. They don't have that's bulls it. or nothing. They got yeah, they got a few buck, few bulls. They, they all the bulls just stand like a feedlot pen. Gotcha. But yeah, there's they got some badass ones. How many there's some horses, horses they everywhere. Do what? How many head of horses do they have on that place? I don't know the exact number, but it's it's, it's a big number. Yeah, it's probably north of five five six hundred. That's a couple. They yeah. got it going on. Yeah, they got some badass horses. Their horses are pretty too. Like all of them are just so oh, they, big and fat. They, and they look like a horse should look. Yeah, athletes. They don't look like these little old. It's pretty fun. We'll Thanks go down. Thanks Derek Big A called on the reservation and it's <laughs> yeah. 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, we'll go down there in the fall and we halter break them all, all the babies. That sounds miserable. It's fun. That's wild. It's really fun. What's yeah. the point so of all that? All their horses are halter broke? Yeah, like we'll just, um, like they're not like super halter broke, but like you just, like you'll run the mare in through like through a, it's like a straight load buck and shoot basically. They'll cut the mare off, halter the baby, kick the mare into a pen here. Swing their cut gate, and then somebody on a horse will ride up, and take the halter shank, and then you take the baby out in the arena, and then tie him up to the fence. Get a long line down the fence. It's just start tying baby bucking horses up, and then when you get done with the last one, you go back to the first one, untie him, and then you just flag him around, and uh, just kind of teach him how to lead alongside a horse. It Makes shows sense. though. It shows like when you go to a colt bucking, and Calgary's there, and them guys pick up their buck like their horses, you know, compared to picking up somebody else's horses, like you can definitely tell. One of the craziest things to me was at Calgary when they used to, do they still do the novice bronc riding and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally that was for the calf roping and it might be an hour to buck four of them because they're going to haul them all out to the ambulance and they bring them right by us. I seen one <laughs> dude had his skull split open. I'm like, why are they doing this? This sounds miserable. But you could either – from the time the rodeo starts, you could rope in 30 minutes or you could rope in an hour. Depends on how many of these poor kids they got to haul out yeah. getting on these freaking Calgary Colts. I'm like, these guys are dumb. Yeah, that's how we started. All right, no way. Some people's terms of fun. <laughs> yeah. Question all the bareback riders. Zeke, you pick up quite a bit, don't you, when you're up home? Not, not like a bunch, but... I like to go do it when I can. It's fun. Yeah. Just looking for a new topic. <laughs> We're just sitting here in awkward silence. Yeah. Y'all can yeah. cut that out if y'all want. <laughs> want to experience more of the NFR? Then visit NFRexperience.com. And we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you're listening right now.
If you like what you've heard on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe.